Okay, hello, my name is Andrew Gable, G-A-B-E-L, not L-E, don't get it switched around. And I am from, I'm a software engineer from Northrop Grumman. Uh, this technical talk is going to be about Agile for Defense, how to actually implement in Agile into a defense kind of setting. So one of the things I want to just throw a plug in for is we do actually have a meetup that we meet up there at DJ's Dugout. Uh, they're in Bellevue every first Wednesday of the month around six o'clock. Free drinks, free food, all brought to you by Tech Systems. So when it comes down to Agile, we already, some of us probably have an idea, you know, using Jira, Confluence, everything, making sure that everyone's part of a team and making sure that no one falls behind, that you have your product owners, you have your scrub masters, you, you have a general idea. And if you don't, Google it. <laughs> uh, and it really kind of uh, broadcasts into the defense world as well. The defense world, they may not be totally familiar with the agile concept, but they're more than willing to participate with your creative endeavors. They are wanting to give the public, us, the best tools available. And with Agile, it opens not just a, okay, you develop this, you develop that, you develop, you know, whatever. You actually work as a team and the blame isn't placed on all oh, this one person in Agile saying, oh my gosh, look at your code, it sucks. Wow, what did you do there? You actually grow as a team, and you teach each other exactly how to better the code, learn new techniques. The defense industry, at least from what I can see, likes that. They like seeing how we interact with each other. And then in the agile concept, you do continuous delivery. You're striving for that continuous delivery. For example, in our project, the GAP CIE project, we do two week delivery, continuous delivery, and we constantly are speaking with the customer. It's no, you know, six month delay. It's actually, I call them up and they're willing to help us out because they know in the long run that their product's going to succeed. And if their product succeeds, we succeed as a team. So, Let's just uh, start right now. Is there any questions so far? Okay. So, some of the tools, for example, what we use in the GAP CIE project there at Northrop is we use uh, Jira for our ticket management. We use Confluence for our knowledge base. And then we also use Fisheye Crucible for our reviews. When it comes down to any of our documents that we provide our client, some of us may think, oh man, they would only expect you know, Microsoft documents or whatever, like a Microsoft Word document or, what, um, or a PowerPoint, whatever the case is. The nice thing about it is sometimes they actually will take a PDF from a Confluence page to show them how to get, it, how to get the project done. So, some of us may be you know, a little weary about it, and that's where communication comes into hand. If you can't communicate with your customer, you have an issue from the get-go. Agile, as I believe, actually enables the teams to communicate with the client. Not one person is you know, left behind or whatever. Not one person is the designee, designated person, the designated liaison for the government that only they can speak. That's the glory of Agile, and that's also the nice thing about being able to interact with your client. As we all know, it, just by a show of hands, are you all commercial developers, government, commercial? So if you ever do have the opportunity to go out and work with the government, they are people just like us. And when it comes down to trying to get ideas, one of the ideas that we do sometimes at the Agile for Defense to actually get the thoughts going, 
and to get everyone to participate in the coffee table talk. We have talks like this, either in uh, our teams or in meetups or whatever the case is. And we actually have it set, uh, spaced off into three sections. Ideas that we want to talk about, ideas uh, that we're talking about right now, and then uh, previous ideas that were already talked about. And you could actually decide if you want to keep on talking about a topic. So for example, if I was actually giving a presentation and after my five minute warning, you all were like, gosh, this guy sucks. Very simple, thumbs down, neutral, keep going, extra five minutes. So I'm actually going to ask right now, just for questions, see what you guys have to, uh, see which direction we want to go for. Which direction do we want to go for the rest of this uh, agile talk for defense? Yeah. So you talk, uh, uh, you're a software engineer, right? Yeah. Uh, what kind of programming language do you spend your time with? Uh, I know that maybe is agnostic to agile. Yeah. But, uh, you know, talk about maybe some of the trials there for developers and engineers and you know, kind of trying to keep on track on time. Yeah, good point. So in our environment that we work with, it's a Java environment. We are a Java-based house. But one of the things with these contracts that we experience is we are, there's a lot of fine detail on different versions of the browser we have to support. So for example, we are now just getting up to IE10, the, the approved version. And Firefox, it's like only Firefox 31. So as you guys can tell, we kind of are in a little bit back. And that's because we have to have approved versions that the government says, yes, you can use this. We have tested it, our, our developers have approved of this browser. So that's one thing that's a little bit different compared to, uh, even I have worked in the commercial world, you know, having the latest and greatest browser, you have to find solutions around uh, older browsers. Then you also have really old code. <laughs> Some of these contracts have been around, you know, for example, the Gap CIE has been around for about a decade. And think about that, if that was a decade, the code that we're messing with was back from 2005. So there's been a lot of techno uh, technology advances since then in the coding world. We are now starting to implement, for example, AngularJS using Node to get some live examples of our code in action. That's great, but it's taking a lot of time. We build up a lot of technical debt, which technical debt basically is, uh, you know, maybe for example, just not placing a Java doc in a correct location that may add up to you know, 20 minutes of technical debt. That, over time, if you never maintain the parts of the code that you know, just don't need to be touched, or you add a new technology to your baseline, and um, you add new technology to your baseline, you just don't actually update any of your old previous existing code, that's going to gradually add up, which means when it comes down to other developers, they're going to have issues likely down the line. You want to try to clean up your technical debt. That could apply both in the government world, but also in the commercial world. Everyone updates. Yeah, in the commercial, uh, in the government world, we have to do a lot of approval. Any of the uh, code that we use has to be approved. Uh, open source, uh, stuff that we pay for, we have to, especially if it has a higher classification rating. You know, some of the stuff, yeah, it's unclassified, but when it gets to a classified level, if, for example, if it was from, developed in a country that the U.S. wasn't totally fond with, we may not be able to use the code. And it's, if you're ever looking for a challenge, that's definitely the environment to get into, because sometimes you won't be able to use the code that, it's like, you know, I really want to use this particular code. And if you can't get that particular code approved, you're going to find a workaround. 
So there's a lot of, like, it, it's a very unique kind of environment because as a developer, we expect to have whatever tool we want be able to be used. Oh yeah, you know, this is a great tool. You know, I really like this map editor or 3D map viewer. But as soon as we, uh, you turn in your recommendation, it takes you know about a month or two just to get approved. And then you have to wait for it to even get into the baseline. You have to look at the long run too. Is it going to be worth it? You know, Do they have the kind of technical support? And will it even be approved? You have to take all those little things into consideration. So that's just a very high overview. What other questions do we have? Yeah. So I guess kind of going off like technical depth and stuff, um, how would you say working around that and getting past like those issues that come with technical depth, um, mm -hmm. that, how does Agile help that? Okay, good question. So when it comes to Agile and technical debt, one of the things is that we always, always go for is helping out the teams, helping out, making sure that everyone gets the job done together. So in Agile, what I would end up saying is when you are trying to whittle down the technical debt, you have to always review. You have to review, and when you're reviewing, you check with your technical debt tool. For example, we use Sonar. Sonar ends up scanning our baseline, and we look. And after we've applied the change, we look and see if that's changed any kind of technical debt for the better or for the worst inside of Sonar. And if it's saying, okay, it's changing for the better, great. If it's not, that's where you meet up with your team. Hey, I'm really having a hard time with this. I know that you've had a great, uh, you've done really great with technical debt and reducing it. It opens that line of communication. It's not strictly on you to reduce the technical debt. It's not your job specifically, it's all of our jobs to actually improve the baseline, to improve the way uh, the program works. And any time, any ticket you take, you should always have check sonar, check whatever tool you use for technical debt, and make sure that it, as what I've been taught before, leave it better than what you found it. Leave it better than what you found it. Because as soon as you say, oh, well, I just don't have the time. I have, you know, three other tickets to do. Okay, well, then the next person says that, the next person says it, and then it gradually builds up. It's a very slow, creeping disaster about to happen. So, that's, does that answer your question? We're all a team. And if we start to let the team fail, we all fail. Next question. Yeah. Uh, a lot of organizations of that size are more used to a waterfall process. Do you ever get okay. any pushback? Or? You know, there's a lot of talk between waterfall and agile. It's, it, it's more of a preference of the company. It, it literally is. And you could bark up, a, you know, bark up the tree or whatever the case is. Oh, agile, agile. It really just depends. I, I think literally, any way the company goes, it also depends on your leadership. If your leadership is all about sitting, I've seen this happen before. Oh yeah, we're an agile environment. Yeah, you're not an agile environment. You have to, under, if you go waterfall, you go waterfall. If you go agile, you go agile. It just has to be implemented correctly. And if it's not implemented correctly, there's manif you know, the agile manifesto. If you don't follow it, you know, oh, well, we're just going to tweak it right here. We don't really want to follow that. It's not agile. You have to be able to be willing to follow through with your steps with whatever way you're going to go. Next question. Okay. So you mentioned like the peer review process. <laughs> Do you find that because I guess not blame, but I'm gonna say blame is spread across more people in an agile environment rather than like one point of failure that the peer review process is a little more dicey. Like, like for example, like if all of us are responsible for one portion of the code and we're all reviewing that one thing, we're a little less 
likely to be really sticklers for rules and stuff like that because it reflects on all of us rather than just that one person. Like, it's really easy to say, you did this wrong, and 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 you did this, rather than like, well, this reflects on us, so we did this wrong, we did this wrong, or do you find it's, the peer review process goes more, it's, it's more helpful, I don't know. That's a great question, actually, and to reflect on that, I think it does actually, now as I'm starting to think of it, it kind of does go not against the team. It seems like it goes more against the person. Because when you set up a review for your particular subtask, like, I guess what I would say is this. When you're presenting to your client, it goes against the entire team. Because you may be only in charge of one particular subtask. But when you are uh, doing it, so when you're presenting as a team in front of the client, you're presenting the whole entire project. When you're presenting it on a review, you're presenting it as yourself, saying this is my particular part, which at times, yeah, it does definitely seem like I've, I've even felt you know, criticized, like what, what's going on here? But the thing is, we have to be able to be willing to see that it's not criticism, a very negative thing against us. Sometimes when we see texts or comments or anything like that. We take it against ourselves because we don't hear the personality, we don't see the face of the person that's giving us our critique, which we could then take that into heart. We can't, as developers, do that. We're here to actually improve the baseline. We're here to make the code work. Take their comments with a grain of salt. Sometimes, sometimes they may actually appear to be kind of aggressive about it. Go talk to them. A lot of the times it's only a few steps or a phone call away. And hearing that kind of comment, you know, hey, can you help me out with that? If they give you a comment that's negative, ask for help. Again, that goes back into Agile. Ask for the help. You are not alone. You know, you are not the one that is particularly assigned to this task, and if you don't do it right, you're going to get fired. Your team is in charge of the entire task. Peer review, yeah, you take the blunt hits at the beginning, but, you learn from what they have to say. They're here to help, even if it doesn't seem like they're here to help. And if you are feeling attacked, go talk to them. That's the key thing to say. And that, that's what I would do. And I've had that happen before, where I feel like I'm personally attacked. Like, ouch, really? You just went that way with it. Sometimes I actually let myself cool down because I read into it a little bit more. But. That's what I would do. That's how I would see peer reviews into an agile way. Yes? Um, I guess kind of following your question, but less on the peer review level and more on the sort of higher level responsibility for the entire you know, product at that point in time or whatever. So your team presents this, and this is what you have, and this is what you've done. Do you ever get to a point where, I don't know if you know like the the sociological concept of social loafing, which is like, <laughs> hey, we're all on a team, you know, it'd be like, you know, it's like when you're in high school and there's that person that doesn't do shit on your team, <laughs> they know they're going to get the same grade as everybody else, so I know X person's going to do it because they care and I don't, you know, do you get elements of that? That's a great question as well. So there's one thing that I forgot to mention earlier about Agile that actually addresses that. Every morning, before you even start your day, you have to present in front of the entire team what you've done with the code. What did you do for that day? Are you having any blockers? Are you stuck? Are you, what are you excelling in? That is some of the key questions that are asked, and it's obvious when someone is not picking up their weight. Like, okay, we all have been working on this. What have you been doing? It becomes very apparent, and as a scrum master, that's when you start, you know, if you start observing that kind of behavior. By by a while, your team's going to start, you know, hey, what are you doing? Come help me. Come peer review with me. Come uh, peer code with me. You know, that there's going to be those questions that will start coming up. That's one of the nice things about agile. It, it doesn't become that kind of high school environment where it's like. Okay, person A, B, and C is going to be doing the project. 
person D, well, I'm just going to be over here and not really show up for the meetings or whatever. You're there at your job for at least a good eight hours a day. If you're not doing your job, your team's going to get on you really quickly. And if your scrum master's not happy with you, he's going to make sure that upper management, they're going to know quickly. Okay, thank you guys very much. Uh, I am on LinkedIn. Again, Andrew Gable with Northrop Grumman. Thank you.